Hey everybody, this is Kian with the RSCP doing another high yield concepts and radiology video. In this video, we're going to talk about shoulder plane film pathology, specifically honing in on dislocations and their complications. If you haven't seen the video that Nishk did on shoulder plane film anatomy, I'm going to go ahead and link that in the description for you. So here's our first case. We have an anterior shoulder dislocation with an associated fracture as well as a fat fluid level. A lipohemarthrosis occurs when fat and blood from the fractured bone mix in the joint space and create this differential fat fluid level. In cases such as this where we have a known fracture, the lipohemarthrosis is less useful. However, in cases where we do not see a fracture, the lipohemarthrosis should clue us into the fact that there may be an occult fracture. Here we have an axillary view of the shoulder. This is the anterior portion of the patient. This is posterior. Here is our glenoid, and here is the humeral head, which is, again, dislocated anteriorly. 95% of dislocations are anterior dislocations and are usually traumatic in nature. 45% of dislocations are going to be posterior dislocations and are traditionally due to seizure or electrocution, but can also be seen in trauma. The transcapular Y view and axillary view are going to be helpful views for us to be able to categorize these dislocations. Now we have a radiograph of the transcapular Y view. We can see the body wall of the patient here, which is going to be anterior. This will be posterior. And then we can see the glenoid and the humeral head. If we follow the contour of the humeral head, we can see this impaction fracture here. This impaction fracture is known as the hill sachs fracture or hill sachs defect. It occurs due to anterior dislocation of the shoulder with subsequent striking of the superior posterior humeral head against the glenoid and is an important thing to look for in all patients with dislocation. In this case, we have another anterior dislocation with the glenoid here, the humeral head, and if we follow the contours of the humeral head, we can see this displaced fracture I've gone ahead and drawn out those lines for you. Post-reduction films such as this one can be useful in the detection of the hill sachs defect. The internal rotation view is going to be the view that we want to use when searching for a hill sachs defect. This is due to the fact that the superior posterior portion of the humeral head is injured during dislocation. Therefore, when we place the patient in internal rotation, it'll place the defect in profile, allowing us to visualize it better. On external rotation, we can see that the hill sachs defect is less visible, though the fracture lines can still be seen here. This is just to highlight the point that the internal rotation view is more optimal when trying to see if there is a hill sachs defect. Here are additional post-reduction films of a patient who suffered an anterior dislocation. On the left side, we have the axillary view where we are sighting up the patient's armpit with the glenoid here and the humeral head here. On the right side, we have an anterior projection of the shoulder, again with the glenoid and the humeral head. These images demonstrate another important finding that we can see in dislocation, mainly the bony bank heart lesion. The bony bank heart lesion is a fracture of the anterior portion of the glenoid rim where it's struck by the humeral head upon dislocation. In the same images without the overlay, we can see again this disruption of the anterior glenoid as well as this disruption of the bony cortex. Here are some cross-sectional images of the shoulder that are going to help demonstrate some of the things that we've discussed in this video. Up top, we have two sagittal oblique views of the shoulder on T2-weighted MRI. On the bottom left, we have a coronal view of the shoulder, again, on T2-weighted MRI. And in the bottom right, we have a sagittal oblique view of the shoulder on CT scan. Just to help orient us, here's our clavicle, here's our acromion, and here's the glenoid showing this large bony bank heart lesion on this image here, as well as this one. T2 MRI will also give us a good look at the soft tissue structures surrounding the shoulder joint. So we have again the humeral head, the glenoid, as well as in purple, the capsule, and a blue arrow pointing to the labrum, which in this case we can see is torn from the glenoid. We can also see a defect in the anterior inferior portion of the glenoid here. 
finally, the CT image allows us to clearly see that same defect in the glenoid. It's important to note from a clinical perspective that once these patients have dislocation of the shoulder, injury to the soft tissues such as the capsule and labrum, as well as remodeling of the bone due to fractures such as the bony Bankart lesion or hill sachs fracture will further predispose them to recurrent dislocation. And this concludes our video on shoulder plane film dislocations and their complications. Thank you for your time.